Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap. You know what, I was shopping at a convention and I ran across a sheet of unmounted rubber and I just adored the images on that sheet of rubber, but I had no clue. I mean, it was an absolute mystery to me how I would get that image onto my paper. So I just walked away from it and I never was able to get the image. But today we are going to unlock the mystery of unmounted rubber stamps. <laughs> All right, so this is our sheet of unmounted rubber, but I think it would be good to first just review the components of a regular wood mounted rubber stamp, one that you might already be comfortable in using. There is the indexing, and that's what tells you what image is on the rubber stamp. Then you have the wood mounted block. Usually it's grouped and it's easy to hang on to. Then you have your cushioning, which helps the rubber make good contact with the paper. And then of course you have the vulcanized rubber image that you actually stamp. Well, here with the unmounted sheet, all we've got is the rubber. So we need to replace all of those other things. Well, the indexing is easy. We just have a sheet of paper printed with the corresponding image. Now you also need a handle of some type. And there's actually handles. These are made of acrylic blocks. And what I'm utilizing here is just one of many different mounting options. This one's called HALOS, which stands for hooked and looped on stamps. Now on this acrylic block there's actually some loop tape that has been drilled into a channel and that's what grabs onto our stamp. And then the other factor of the hooked and looped on stamps thing is the hook. This is actually hook tape and that gets put onto the back of the stamp. So without further ado, let's get mounting. All right, taking our rubber stamp, we're gonna turn it over. Now the temptation might be to actually cut out all these little images out of the rubber sheet Refrain from doing that. Leave them all together on the sheet, turn it over, and let's go ahead and unroll a piece of our hook tape. Now, a yard of hook tape will cover about three sheets of unmounted rubber stamps, the way they're released by Club Scrap, in a size of five and a half by eight and a half. So one full yard does three full sheets. Now I'm using a special scissors here to cut this hook tape. This is by Tonic Studios. It's a seven inch blade with a serration and it's also non-stick coating. So that's gonna keep the adhesive from the hook tape from getting stuck onto the scissor blade. And now I'm removing the backing and then just putting the tape onto the back of the rubber. And just push it down firmly into place. And then of course you'll do that with the second sheet. And notice I'm running it horizontally that wasn't so hard. Now you turn the rubber over and another advantage to the scissors, it cuts through this layer of rubber and the layer of adhesive like butter. Just going right through there. All right, so just make the corner here. One important tip is just to avoid cutting at an angle. Keep your scissors at a 90 degree angle. And now I've cut out one of the images. That didn't take any time at all. And you'll continue just cutting all around the images on the sheet until they're completely removed from the full sheet of rubber and just discard all of the other parts and pieces. And then when you're done doing that, here you will have all of your little pieces of rubber ready to use. Now remember, you have this little mounting block and these come in all different sizes and shapes so that you can use the size block that best fits your rubber stamp. Okay, so now, without further ado, let's get stamping. I've got a piece of 12 by 12 paper here and what's fun about this layout that I'm going to show you is I'm using completely plain paper to begin and just incorporating my rubber stamps to decorate it fully. I'm taking the largest rubber stamp and I'm just going to attach it to the acrylic block and as you can see it's attached. Okay. Next I'm going to take some ink, it's a deep red color and I'm just going to ink the stamp. Now remember when you ink you want to make sure you tap and move the stamp so that it's thoroughly inked. Now, my first image, what I'm going to do with this is create a background with this one stamp. So I'm gonna stamp it repeatedly. The temptation might be to take my first stamp and just stamp it into the corner here. I don't wanna do that because if I stamp in rows, sometimes you start to drift in your direction and then your background doesn't look very nice. Let's create an intentional randomness by just putting our first image at an angle right in the middle of our paper, and that way I'm not forced to stay in a straight line. Now there's my stamped image. I'll ink and then I'll stamp it again right next door. And then one of the other important things about creating a border is that you want to make sure it goes off of the edge. I would call it a bleed off the edge of the paper. And then I'll go the other direction, lining up at the end here. Now for my next row, I'm not going to start in the same exact spot that I just stamped. I'm not going to go directly above it. It's similar to laying bricks. I'm going to split the difference here and stamp 
right in between where these two previous images worked. Let me show you what that's going to look like when it's done. And there it is, my background page. So what started out as a plain sheet is now fully decorated. And then what of course I'm going to do is trim a little bit off the edges and add a background paper. Another tip I want to share is with my ink, no stamps this time, I'm going to create a paperless border. All right, so there is my page. And the next thing we're going to do in true Trisha fashion is create a border strip so that we have an anchor for all of our photos. Naturally, I'm bringing in a pure plain piece of light gray paper to match and I'm taking the same image that I just used earlier and I'm going to stamp a collage of all of the images from this rubber stamp sheet. Now to start a collage the first thing I like to do is stamp an image primarily you know, with a, lar well, a larger image right on our page and then I'm going to stamp it two more times making sure I'm going off the edge of my border strip. Each one kind of in a little bit of a different spot and then I just have a cleaning cloth here that I'll rub my stamp on to remove the ink and then I can set it aside and I'll select another image, place it on the mount and this time I'm going to stamp the image but I want it to be a little softer color so I'm going to use the same color pad and stamp it off on my paper and then hit the border strip and it's going to give me a little bit of a softer effect. I'll do that three times. Wipe, peel it away, grab another image. And these I'll go full strength, clean, tear it away, grab another image. I mean, and this is in one sheet. I have so many possibilities. I can use these images as backgrounds. I can use them in the foreground. I can use them for greeting cards. It doesn't really matter. I think we're about finished with our border. Once again, let's take our ink pad. We're just going to add that same border. Naturally, let's mat this with a piece of dark gray paper. And let me show you how fabulous this looks. It's really coming together. But we have yet another thing we're going to do to incorporate these rubber stamps into our page. We're going to make sort of a fancy version of a photo mounting corner. Now, what I've gone ahead and done earlier is taken a photo and I've trimmed it down a little bit. And I've got three mats. I've got a narrow gray one and a larger light gray and then another dark gray. I'm going to take that larger light gray mat out and I'm going to stamp it. So I'm going to do is take in one of our mounted images and lay it onto the mount again and ink it. Now with this technique you can use just about any stamp that actually has an image with a beginning and an end. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Now this image has a circle, so let me stamp it and show you what this is going to look like. I'm doing it right on the corner of that photo mat that I had. And now do you see that circle showing up there? That placement of that circle was very intentional and you're going to see why in a second. I'm going to go ahead and stamp another one in the other corner, in the opposing corner of this paper push down firmly and there it is. Now the next thing we need is a cutting mat and with the pencil I'm going to lay my photo mat right center it up on all four sides and right where the circle comes in contact with the photo here I'm going to make a little line on each side. I'll do the same thing at the top side of the photo. Now I have what's going to be a cutting guideline for myself. I'm going to take my craft knife and this is where I'm going to start, right where that circle is in line with the pencil. And I'm going to carefully just bring my blade around. And this is a circle so it's quick and easy to cut but you can do more fancy things as well. I'm going to repeat that on this side. If I just pull this back, I'm ready to insert my photo right into those two little notches. And then all I've got to do is back it with this little photo mat. And I've made a really clever photo mounting corner. So let me show you the finished version. I'll just bring it right over here. There's our photo and then a border. I've even gone ahead and added another photo with some stamped lettering right on the caption here. Put it directly on top of the photo. Finally, a little embellishment tag that I've stamped with the same images that I cut out earlier and then added some journaling onto the tag and my page is done. Now, you might think, well, okay, this is a great page, but then what do I do with all these great stamps when I, once I've used them once? Don't worry about that. You have a different color scheme. You want to portray a different feel. This is a page, in this case, using the exact same things, the same images and everything, the same format, but it creates an entirely different look with a different set of colors. Here I have all of these great pages, but I've got myself a mess, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean it up. 
The first thing we need to do to store those unmounted rubber stamps of ours is to grab your standard office supply, inexpensive page protector, and insert a nice heavy piece of cardstock into the protector. Once you've done that, you're going to reach for some loop strips. Now, these loop strips come, and they're about 11 inches long, and they're half inch wide, and they're all pre-cut, so that you can tear them up into strips and put them on your page protector. Here, I've already got one that has strips on it, and you peel away the backing, and you just lay the strip right onto the page protector. This kind of mimics the way that acrylic block works because now we can store our stamps there. And in fact, I store my stamps in a three ring binder. And this works great for storing them because my index sheet, remember talking about that? The index sheet can go right onto one side of the page protector. And here's the one that I've treated with that loop tape. Now the hook tape on the back of the rubber stamps allows me to store them just like so. If I just page through my binder, I can at a glance, I can see all of the images that I have to choose from when I'm creating my rubber stamped cards. And then when I'm done, I can take my binder and zip it up. And that way I don't have to worry about losing any images uh, when I'm on the go. And look, inside this binder, I have been able to hide, I mean store, literally hundreds of unmounted rubber stamps. Well, today we have unlocked the mystery of unmounted rubber stamps. I hope you have fun trying it for yourself. See you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.